fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Domingo, servant to Roger Grady, the commissioner of military and civilian affairs in the Southwest, entered Grady's study. Senor, the new man he has arrived from Washington. Charles Webster? Well, have him come right in, Domingo. Don't keep him waiting out in the hallway. See, si, senor, I get it. Charles Webster, the new deputy commissioner, introduced himself to his superior, Roger Grady. The genial commissioner made the young man welcome and then spoke to his servant. Oh, Domingo, Mr. Webster and I have a lot to discuss. Close the door and make sure we're not disturbed, eh? See, si, senor, I do as you say. And take Mr. Webster's luggage to the south room. He's had a long journey from Washington. He'll be my guest for a few days before he goes on to take over his new position. See, si, senor. Webster, I'm glad they sent you down here to help me. I need someone to look after matters down near the border. It's too much of a job for me, and it's something the military people shouldn't be expected to handle. I hope I'll do a good job, Commissioner. Uh, I'm not worried about that. I've been told all about you. They uh, told you in Washington what your duties will be. Oh, yes, sir. But I'd like to review all that with you. Yes, of course. Oh, say, by the way, the $50,000 you'll use as a working fund in Border City is at Fort Taylor. It's safer there. Uh, I'm to stop over at the fort. I'll pick up the money then? Yes. Uh, Major Conway will give you an escort to get it to your headquarters with the least trouble. You uh, met Major Conway when the delegation from this territory was in the capital last winter, didn't you? No, I didn't, sir. Uh -huh. The only man I met from that group was old Lee Hanna. <laughs> we became good friends. <laughs> ah, Lee's a great old boy. The finest hunter and scout this territory has ever seen. But uh, speaking as I was a Major Conway, you must get to know him well. <laughs> Outside in the hall, the servant Domingo knelt by the door and kept his ear close to the keyhole. That night, he went to Commissioner Grady after dinner had been served. Senor, a most awful thing has happened. Hmm? My mother, she is sick. Oh. I must head south to see her at once because she calls for me, I'm told. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Domingo. 
Go by all means. And uh, use my black stallion for the journey. Oh, gracias. And uh, here's some money. Oh, gracias. You'll need it if your mother's ill. Hours later, after riding hard, Domingo was in a hideaway cabin many miles from Commissioner Grady's home. Outlaw Jack Morrow heard Domingo's report with evident relish. Fifty thousand dollars, huh? Oh, that's a lot of money. You, uh... You say this fellow Webster's never been to Fort Taylor? That is right, Senor Jack. And he has never met this Major Conway who's in charge of the fort. That's all I need to know. We'll get the money. I have an idea. What is this idea, Senor Jack? I'll tell you later. I want you to do something first. The boys are playing cards in the next room. You tell Wynn Cooper to come out here right away. I want to talk to him. See, I do that at once, Senor Jack. Senor Jack, here is Cooper, like you ask. You want me, Jack? Yeah, sit down, sit down. Thanks. Wynn, how would you like to be the new United States Deputy Commissioner for this territory? What are you talking about? What's the joke? It's no joke, Wynn. Listen to this. I've had Domingo planted in Commissioner Grady's house ever since the old man came out here. I know that. And I figured someday he'd come across some information that I could use. Well... <laughs> He finally has. What is it? And what's this deputy business? A fellow named Webster's on his way to Border City, a supervisor down there. Something like that, but uh, anyway, he's a deputy of Grady's. Oh, I see. Oh, no, no, you don't. Webster's going to stop off at Fort Taylor and pick up $50,000 to take along with him. But you're going to get it instead. How? You talk well, for one thing. And what's more, nobody knows you in these parts. So? So the idea I have for you is perfect. Now, here's what we're going to do. And the entire gang will be in on this. Now, starting tomorrow, we keep an eye on the road to Fort Taylor. Mm -hmm. Domingo knows Webster. And when Webster comes riding along, we move in on him. Now, Domingo will pretend to have a message for him. Early in the morning, three days later, Charles Webster mounted his horse and prepared to take leave of Commissioner Grady. Well, I'm ready, sir. Yes. Commissioner, I've enjoyed every moment of my stay with you. It's been nice having you here, Webster. Are you sure you don't uh, want me to send a man along with you? You say the main road passes directly by Fort Taylor? Yes, that's right. Keep riding south and you can't miss it. You'll get there by tomorrow evening. Then I'll not need a guide. I'll go it alone, sir. Uh, whatever you say. Good luck on your job, Webster. Thank you, sir. And goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, get up. Give Major and Mrs. Conway my regards. The following morning, at a point halfway to Fort Taylor, Jack Morrow and his band of outlaws sat astride their horses in a grove of trees off the main road. Suddenly, one of his men, who had been keeping a lookout from an elevation, galloped down to the leader. Oh, hold oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. Jack, there's a rider heading this way from the north. He's alone. Alone, huh? Domingo, take my field glasses. Ride up to where he can use them and see if it's Webster. See, si, Senor Jack. Hey, take the glasses, please. Yeah. Here. Now, hurry up. See. Si. Andale. Andale. Senor Jack, I see him through glasses. It is Senor Webster, all right. I know for sure. And alone, huh? Good. This will be easy, win. I hope so. Domingo, you know what you're supposed to do now, don't you? See, si. When he ride past here, I wait till he get a little way ahead. Then I gallop after him and tell him like you say. Right. We rode in shooting. We might hit some of the papers Wynn will have to use, and we can't take that chance. All right, get ready now, boys. And keep your horses still. Right. This is it. Charles Webster passed a thick grove of trees a few minutes later, but his attention was on the road straight ahead. He had gone about a quarter of a mile when suddenly he heard hoofs galloping behind him. Senor! What? Senor Webster! Senor, stop! Ho, ho, ho! Webster, when he saw the rider who galloped up to him, was surprised. Ho, ho, ho! Domingo, where did you come from? Yeah. Commissioner Grady told me you'd gone to your sick mother. Si, senor, that I do. 
But now she's well. I, I get back a short time after you leave the senior commission. Oh. Well, what's the matter, Domingo? Why are you here? I am right after you, Senor Webster. You must return at once. The commissioner will want you to come back. He's most important. It must be if he sent you after me. All right, boy, get around. Let's start back, Domingo. See, si, senor, we go. Come on, Andere. get him. Oh. When they reached the grove of trees once more, Domingo, slightly in the lead, reined his horse. Oh, 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 oh. Domingo, what's the matter? Senor, you will raise your hands in the air, please. A gun? What is this, Domingo? If this is a joke, oh, why you might... Joke, Webster. Keep those hands up if you don't want to be drilled. Right around the other side of him, boys. Right what do you men want? I have no money. Oh, 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 oh. Not much, anyway. Take what I have We and don't it... want chicken feed, Webster. We're after the $50,000 you're supposed to get at Fort Taylor. What? Why, you're crazy. You can't get near that. That's what you think. We're going to use your papers to do just that. Wynn, come on. Hold this fellow while I search him in his haversack. Don't you try anything like that. You lay a hand on me, you'll come be on, get down off that horse. Front hey, off. I, I, That's it, Wynn. Now hold him. Boys, keep him covered. The outlaws relieved Charles Webster of his official papers and gave them to Wynn Cooper. They bound and gagged the deputy commissioner and left him in the high grass far back off the main road among the trees. Then they prepared to leave. Jack Morrow, the leader, spoke. Hey, boy. All is well, I'll come back and cut those ropes. Things go wrong, it's just too bad for him. Wynn, you go right on to Fort Taylor. All right. Domingo, you go with him like I told you. Senora, I am not sure it is good for me. Shut up and do as I say. They know you at the fort. You're Grady's man. And being with Cooper is going to be proof that he's Charles Webster. Now, you get going or I'll... See, Senor Jack, I do like you say. Now, you're all straightened out about what to do, eh, Wynn? Yes, you'll be waiting at the pass, right? Yeah, we'll ride that far with you. And get off the road and let you continue south with Domingo. We'll be waiting. All right, come on, Domingo. We're going to ride hard. I want to get to the fort by this afternoon. Well, so long, Webster. Keep an eye out for buzzards. <laughs> get up! Get up! Get up. Get up. Oh. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had ridden from the hills in the east and were now on the main road heading south. It was high noon, and they slowed their horses as they neared a grove of trees to the side of the road. We'll stop here, Tonto, and feed our horses. Okay, Masabi. Them not eat since sunrise. Uh, we'll rest them a while. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What's wrong, boy? What is it? You must have him see something. Any big fellow? What is it you see there among the trees? Easy now. I'll give you your head. Go on. The Lone Ranger, relying on Silver's great instinct, let the reins drop loose around the horse's neck. Silver, his every sense alert, headed through the trees while the masked man watched the ground ahead. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger saw a figure lying in the deep grass. So that's it. You knew someone was in here, didn't you, Silver? Oh, boy. Oh, oh it's got hope, fella. You must have it. Man on ground. Yes, Tonto. Easy. Set it, big fella. Oh, easy, bound and gagged. Easy, fella. All right, mister. We'll untie you and get that gag out of your mouth. <laughs> There's the gag. Oh, thank you. Now don't thank me. Thank my horse. He led us to you. Well, you're, you're hosted. Yes, and don't look frightened. I'll explain later why I wear this mask. Right now, let's get you free of those ropes and then tell us how you happen to be here like this. The Lone Ranger and Tonto freed Charles Webster of his bonds, then encouraged him to tell all that had happened. The new deputy commissioner related everything and concluded... And the man who took my paper said they'd reach the fort this afternoon. We'll ride fast and try to overtake them. But they took my horse. Uh, you'll ride with me, Silver Strong. Are you ready? Oh, yes. Easy, steady, big fellow. Let me help you up here behind me. Thank you. I'm all set. Then hold on. Come on, Silver. Come on. Oh. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Powell to continue. It was mid-afternoon when Wynn Cooper, with Domingo by his side, appeared at Fort Taylor and offered the papers which identified him as the new United States Deputy Commissioner, Charles Webster. The officer of the guard led him and the servant across the spacious parade ground to Major Thomas Conway's quarters, situated at the far end of the post. Through here, Mr. Webster. Major Conway's been expecting you, sir. Major Conway and his wife were waiting inside the large house when Webster entered. Conway looked at Domingo with surprise. Domingo, Commissioner Grady didn't advise me you'd be with Mr. Webster. He told me to come, senor. Well, not that it matters. I'm glad to see you. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Webster. I'm sorry. It's all right, Major. I needed Domingo to guide me here. This country is new to me, you know. Of course. Mr. Webster, may I introduce my wife? How do you do, Mr. Pleasure. Webster and the beautiful Irene Conway acknowledged introductions and exchanged the usual trivial pleasantries. Then Major Conway spoke. I've had your quarters prepared for you, Mr. Webster. They're on the other side well, of the Well, thank post. you, Major, but I shan't be using them. What? That's right. I'm staying just a few minutes, sir. I intend to continue on to Border City at once. Oh, but you can't, sir. You've been riding most of the day, haven't you? Yes. Border City's quite a distance, you know. You'll do better if you start in the morning, Mr. Webster. That's right. Start now. There's no place you'll be able to stay overnight. Oh, please, Whereas... Major, I have very good reasons for going on at once. Governmental reasons, serious ones. Well, if that's the case... Here, sir, are my papers. Now, that one on top is the order for the money you've been holding for me. I'll take it with me. Well, it's in a safe at headquarters. I'll have Sergeant White get it. I'll also arrange to have a squad of men accompany you to Border City. Oh, please, no, Major, no guard. There are important reasons why I'll not want one. Oh, no guard? Mr. Webster, I'm responsible for that money and your safety. Well, you'll not be responsible for the money once I've signed for it, will you? No. And as for my safety, don't you worry about me. Domingo will be with me and well, we'll... Mr. Webster, if there are governmental reasons for your actions which you can't divulge... There are, and I'm sorry I'm not permitted to tell you what they are. Nevertheless, if there are, I still have my orders. At least one of my men must accompany you to Border City. One man? Oh, uh, well, that'll be agreeable to me, but only one. May I have that money now, sir? I'll send for it. Meanwhile, I'll get the transfer papers and have you signed for the currency. I'm disappointed you're not going to stay. My wife will be, too. When Sergeant White returned to Major Conway's quarters with a satchel containing the $50,000, an elderly man in trapper's clothes was with him. The man, slim, clear-eyed, and straight as a ramrod, paid no attention to military formalities. Lee Hanna, oldest scout in the territory, greeted Major and Mrs. Conway. Well, hi, Major. Hi, Mrs. Conway. The sergeant just after telling me that Charlie Webster, the fellow I met in Washington, is here. I'm getting ready to take right off again. Well, he told you the truth, Lee. Well, where is he? Where's Webster? I want to say hello to him. Well, that's Mr. Webster over there. Uh, I'm Charles Webster. Huh? You're not Charlie Webster. I met Charlie Webster when I went with the delegation to Washington. Oh, yes, I, I know the man you mean. His name is the same as mine. We are constantly receiving each other's mail and things like that. That must be confusing. Oh, that's funny. I got a letter from the Charlie Webster I met, and he told me he was the one who was coming here and said that he Just would... Just a moment, Lee. You say this is not the Mr. Webster you met? That's right. They don't look anything alike. And in his letter, you he said... You must be mistaken, old fellow. Huh? Don't call me old fellow like that. Uh, Sergeant, come over here, please. Yes. Mr. Webster... I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask that you remain here overnight instead of going on to Border City. What? How dare you? I told you... I know I... what you told me, Mr. Webster. And everything may be perfectly in order. But there's this matter of money and the fact that Washington, D.C. is a great distance from Fort Taylor. What do you mean by that? I mean that a number of things might happen to a man traveling from Washington to here. So I'll send a wire to headquarters asking them to confirm your orders. To give a complete description. You'll of... get your hands up, Major. You too, old man. What? Sergeant White, get him. Yeah, uh, uh, that got him. Take his gun from the floor, Domingo. See, si, Senor Wynn. Domingo. Domingo's with me, and you're right. I'm not Charles Webster. We've disposed of him. Now we'll take care of you, all of you. You're insane, Mister. You'll never get out of this fort with the money. You'll not even get out alive. No, I'm doing both, Mrs. Conway. You're leaving this fort within five minutes. You're going with Domingo. Oh, That's oh. right. He'll take you back to the pass where my partners are waiting. Major, you and I will follow them in one half an hour. You are insane. I'll never... Shut up. You have no alternative. Domingo will have orders. If we don't join my partners within half an hour, after he turns your wife over to them, she'll be killed. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I'm speaking the truth. 
Major, we leave here with the money after your wife and Domingo get a head start. Why, you filthy ratter, you, I'm going to... Oh. Take his gun, too, Domingo. Now, Major. I'm a coward doing this. But my wife is more dear to me than my life. What is it you want us to do? <laughs> That's better. I'll tell you. A few minutes later, Irene Conway and Domingo rode out of the fort. As they went through the gate, the Major's oh, wife oh, oh, spoke oh. to the sentry. I'm going for a ride with Domingo, Private Gray. The Major and his friend will join us on the road in half an hour. Yes, sir. Shall we go, Domingo? See. Get on the leg. Get Tonto was riding in advance of the Lone Ranger and Charles Webster, who sat behind the masked man on Silver's broad back. Suddenly, Tonto slowed his horse, then rode back to the Lone Ranger. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. He must have it. Yes. Riders come this way. One, a woman. It must be one of the officers' wives. We're near the fort now. I will stop here, Tonto. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold We'll wait till they pass, Mr. Webster. They become alarmed at my mask. They'll... That's Domingo. What? I can see the man with her. That's Domingo, the one I told you about. Commissioner Grady's servant That's who... enough. Shield your face behind my back. Let me handle this. Toto, be ready for anything. Ah. The Lone Ranger could see the look of fear in the eyes of the woman who rode up to him and Toto with a man who had been pointed out as Domingo. Just a minute, please. I'd like to speak to you. Oh, oh, oh. oh. these are your crooked partners, are they, Domingo? No. Well, we go on. We arrive. Hello, Domingo. Oh. Senor Webster. Toto. Uh-uh. You not shoot. Me take that gun. That's it, Toto. You're, you're not his partners? No, miss. Now, don't be frightened. Tell us, why are you with this man? Charles Webster introduced himself and related what had happened to him. Then Irene Conway told the three men everything. The Lone Ranger's decision was immediate. We've been here a number of minutes now. Uh, Mrs. Conway, you say this imposter is to follow with your husband within half an hour? Yes, he said it would be exactly half an hour. Then there's no sense going forward. We'll be seen on the road. We'll tie Domingo and ride our horses over there behind those boulders. Win Cooper and Major Conway had left the fort exactly half an hour after Domingo had taken the officer's wife. Now, silently, they galloped along the road that would take them to the pass. <laughs> Don't look so scared. You'll see your wife soon. The pass is only a few miles beyond those boulders over there. Stop, you... stop what? The a masked man. And an Indian. What is this? I'll get those two before you do it. Oh, oh, oh there. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Wait, don't shoot me. Don't shoot. Oh, Silver. Oh, easy. Send big fellow. Don't worry, Major Conway. We know who you are. And all about this man. Huh? But how did... Oh, no. I'm seeing things. It's not... Yes, it's your wife, Major. Tom! Tom, I'm safe. Irene! Oh, oh there. Oh, Irene, my darling, they didn't harm you. No, dear, I'm safe. Tom, that man coming from behind the boulders walking this way, that's Charles Webster. The real Charles Webster. I don't understand this. He's alive, and, and you're all right, too. This masked man shot the one who said he was Webster. And Toto's taking care of his arm now. We'll tie him and take him along with Domingo. Oh, Major, Domingo and this other man aren't the only ones involved in the attempt to take that money. Oh, that reminds me. I'd better get that satchel. There. As I have it. Yeah, this is what they were after. Domingo told us the entire story. He also told us about the rest of the men in his gang. It's the Jack Morrow gang. Jack and... Morrow? Yes. Well, he's the biggest outlaw in these parts. Domingo says that he and his men are waiting inside the pass. If we ride back to the fort, Major, and get some troops, you'll be able to take the whole outfit. They're supposed to wait until the money's delivered to them. The fake Charles Webster told me that. Well, let's get to the fort. I'll get every man available. We'll go after those rats. Webster... You take that horse the crook was riding. Come with us. Get back to the pass by sundown. The sun was sinking in the west when Major Conway led his troops down from all sides of the pass to surround Jack Morrow and the outlaws who were with him. The outlaw chief saw that he and his band had no chance. He shouted above the din.
The Lone Ranger and Toto saw the outlaws and the wounded Win Cooper together with Domingo placed in the stockade of the fort. Then, waving goodbye, they rode away. Adios. Goodbye, Mr. Get him up. Oh, oh look at that masked man ride. What a fine man he is. He's wonderful. Tom, you should have seen how he and his friend Tonto handled Domingo. I saw how he shot the gun clean out of that Win Cooper's hand. Greatest shot I ever saw in my life. I could have told you that. Lee Hannah, you, you're not No, the... I'm not dead, Mrs. Conway. Oh. That fellow's bullet just nicked my side. I sneaked out of the infirmary when I heard the masked man and engine were here. Lee, and I want... you know them? You know who the masked man is? They're not who he is, not exactly. I just know he's the greatest rider, the greatest shot, and the greatest man this West has ever seen. I think you must be right. I know he saved my life. And my life, too. Those outlaws would have shot Tom and me once they had us in the past. I'm sure they would have, darling. But, Lee, you say you know who the masked man is. Grateful as we are, we never did ask him. Who is he? Why, I'm surprised a soldier like you don't know, Major. There's only one great masked man in the West, and that's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.